Good morning friends, I'm Dr. Frederick Mulder. I live in Winchester and today I'm going to Cambridge for some work and uh, I'm going to Charles Darwin's college uh, for a specific reason today. I know they closed. I want to go stand in front of Charles Darwin's college and read two paragraphs from a new book on Charles Darwin. Now, I've studied in Cambridge. I did research there for about four or five years and I was there when they had the special commemorations of, of Darwin in 2009 and I remember at the time uh, you're not allowed to criticize Charles Darwin. He's like the god of science in some of the departments there and I've always struggled to get a book that really captures my own wrestling with Charles Darwin with his theories of evolution and finally about two weeks ago I got a book and uh, it's just absolutely remarkable how scientists philosophers who disagree with Darwin now we can see it they are vilified they are mocked they are ridiculed and this book received terrible reviews in England and I want to go tell you why I think this book is re receiving such bad reviews in England I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs from this book to you while trying to stand in front of Charles Darwin's college in Cambridge. So we're walking to the college, Anastasia, where Charles Darwin was a student. Behind me is Christ College in Cambridge where Charles Darwin studied. My scientist friend, my Christian friend, can I invite you to read He's this news? He's Christian. He's an atheist. I know, darling, that's sad. Then why did he say Christian? I want to invite Christians to actually read this book because this book uncovers so many of the theories and things that he did that caused so much pain and racism and suffering in the world. I want Christians to read it that they can know about it. So can you pray with me that Christians will buy this book? I want to invite you to get this book and read it and discover what went on with Darwinian evolution in the empire. Darwin offered the emergent Victorian middle classes a consolation myth. He told them that all their getting and spending, all their neglect of their own poor muddled masses, all their greed and selfishness was in fact natural. It was the way things were. The whole of nature arising from the primeval slime and evolving through its various animal forms from amoebas to the higher primates was on a journey of improvement moving onwards and upwards from barnacles to shrimps from fish to fowl from orang-utans to silk-hated members of parliament and leaders of british industry it was all happening without the interference or tiresome conscience pricking of the Almighty. He, in fact, had been conveniently removed from the picture, as had been the names of many other thinkers and scientists. For all the brave Darwinian talk of natural selection being non corrosive and impersonal, it breathes through the pores of everything which Darwin and Darwin right that natural selection in fact favors the white middle class people Western people can I invite you to read a n Wilson Charles Darwin the Victorian mythmaker 